guys, it's Tara with day four of my handmade Halloween video series. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of watercoloring and doing a bit of a darker, spookier kind of card. Um, and so I'm going to use this stamp set by Hero Arts. It is a stamp and cut. It's really cool. It comes with this little 3x4 stamp set and then the coordinating die that will cut out all of these little witchy feet images. So I'm going to use all three of these images and I'm going to stamp them onto some Canson XL cold press watercolor paper. And I am using my VersaFine Black Onyx ink. Um, this is a pigment ink, but when it's all dry, it is nice and waterproof. So it's going to work well with the watercoloring that I'm doing. And I am just lining up the three sets of these little feet. I think these little feet are too stinking cute. These ones here are my favorites with the little chevron tights. And then I'm going to hit those with my heat gun just to make sure that that pigment ink is nice and dry before I start my water coloring. So um, for my water coloring, I'm going to get out my little palette here and I'm just going to spritz some clean water so that I have that to um, wash off my brush. And I'm going to be using my distress markers to do this water coloring today. And I haven't done this in a long time and this is one of my favorite ways to color so I'm super excited to be getting back into this. I got my Zig Clean Color Pens and I kind of got out of the, the Distress Ink water coloring. So excited to be jumping back on that, that bike here. So I am starting with some ripe persimmon and I am just going to go in where I want the shadows to be darkest and I am just going to apply some of that color with my markers. So I am going to zoom in here in a moment. I was so eager and excited to get started I forgot that I hadn't done that for you guys so now I'm nice and zoomed in so you can see what I'm up to and I will apologize ahead of time my my kiddo was doing some crafting with me today which is awesome but she's working on the same table that I am and so she keeps kind of jostling the table as she works so my camera kind of wiggles sometimes so I apologize for that but it's not too bad but I wanted to give you a heads up so I went ahead with my water and kind of pulled the color out from where I applied it with the marker and then I went back in with the marker again just to darken up those shadows and I'm going to go back in with my brush. I do tend to like working with a little bit more of a dry brush um, that allows me some more control over the color. I don't, I personally am not a huge fan in my own work of the super loose watery watercolor look. I love it when other people do it. I just can't seem to pull it off in my own work very well so when I work with watercolors I do a little bit more of a controlled um, dry watercolor look so that's what you're gonna see see me doing here this is the dusty Concord I love this color it's really great for this kind of more traditional Halloween card with with more muted tones and less vibrancy it's got like this really cool gray tone to it so you can see what I did there is I took an acrylic block and scribbled my marker onto the acrylic block and then I'm just picking that color up with my paintbrush to be able to add a little bit more color these tights are so busy with that spider web pattern that I was having trouble kind of seeing that really light purple through it so I wanted to to go in and add a little bit more of that color there so now that those tights are all colored in, I am going to go ahead and start working on the shoes here. And for these shoes, I'm going to use some Wild Honey. And it's this really great yellowy, orangey color. And again, I'm just going to come in with my marker and apply the highlights where I want the shadows to be the darkest. And then I'm going to come in with my brush here and just use the water to pull that color out. Now while that first shoe is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process with the second shoe. And I always like to wait for my image to dry a little bit before I go back in and start darkening my shadows. This just prevents the new color that I'm putting down from instantly bleeding out into the rest of the color. If it's too wet, it's just going to spread right out because that's what watercolor does. It just goes where the water is. But if you wait for it to dry a little bit, then when you come back in with extra shadows, it's going to stay dark where you apply it, and then you have more control with your brush to go back in and pull that out. So with these images, that was easy because everything dried quickly because they're such teeny tiny little images. But if you are working on a larger space, you can just go ahead and hit that with your heat gun um, if you need it to dry a little bit faster in between, and then it allows you to layer the color on top rather than blending it all in together. So I'm going to put some of that wild honey on these buckles on this black shoes here as well. Um, I will come back in later with a sparkly gold gel pen and go over those buckles but I want to have a base coat of some some gold on there. 
So now I'm going to color my favorite set of feet here, and these are these little chevron ones, and I'm going to use some mowed lawn for the tights, give it a nice green tone here. I do have my watercolor paper taped down to just a really inexpensive clipboard that I found um, at the store, and that just gives me a nice hard surface and keeps my paper still, and if I wanted to, like if I was doing a background, I could lift this up and kind of tilt it around and let those those paints run where they wanted to. So that's just a little little tip for something I like to do when I watercolor. So now that I've got those tights all colored in in the green, I'm going to start working on the shoes and I'm going to come back in with the same dusty Concord that I colored the spiderweb tights and I'm going to color these shoes. And this is where um, this color really I think is awesome because as I was saying earlier it has those kind of gray tones so it it's purple but it's really nice and muted and kind of spooky I don't know I really like this color I think it's really really fun and I I have a hard time finding the perfect place to use it I tend to go for the seedless preserves when I'm doing purples because it is more vibrant so I was kind of excited that I was doing this more muted low-key card and I'm like I'm gonna bust out some of these colors that I don't don't use very often so that was super fun so I'm gonna come back in as I've been doing the with the rest of the images and add some shadows back in. I did put some shadows where the laces on those boots would be and then um, up underneath the, the heels and you can see here my brush is pretty dry. Really what I'm going for, I want to keep that really deep shadow look and I'm just kind of wanting to smooth out the line where I drew with the marker just enough to make it look like it's not a harsh line. That's all I'm doing with my paintbrush. So um, just really basic and easy. So then I am going to, because I couldn't resist, come in with seedless preserves and that little line at the top of her boots. I don't know if that's her little sock showing or what the deal is, but I decided to go ahead and make that a slightly different color and use that seedless preserves there. So now all these little feet are good to go and I'm going to work on a little bit of a background. So because this is a more muted card, I didn't want just a solid white background behind these feet. So first what I'm going to do is come in with a slightly larger paintbrush than what I've been using and I'm just going to put down a layer of water. So this is just clean, plain water and I'm just wetting my paper so that when I start applying the color back here it's going to just kind of go where that water is and have a nice light wash over the top. I don't really want any sort of a design in the background, I just want it to not be this stark white. So I am using pumice stone for this and I could have gotten out my Distress Ink pad but because I'm using the markers and I already had them out, I'm just going to do that same technique where I scribble a bunch of color on the acrylic block there and then I'm just going to pick it up with my paintbrush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to drop that color from that pumice stone marker where I've already applied that water and it's just going to go where the water is. So really it's just getting the wash of color on the background. And I do have to go back in and re-scribble with my marker several times because I did kind of need a lot of ink for this. Like I said, it probably would have been better to get out my ink pad and do this smushing, but I was being lazy, so I just scribbled a bunch of times. No big deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that ink all the way around. I am going to be covering up the top of their little legs in the finished card. So I'm not concerned about going up too high. I'm going to trim this whole piece down when I'm all done. So I'm just wanting to get that right around those little feet. So once I have my base coat of color on, I'm going to come back in with my marker and I'm going to start adding some more shadows. So I want to put a little bit of shadow both underneath all the feet and then kind of next to some of the legs. And this is going to create just a little bit of dimension that's kind of give, going to give the illusion that these images are popped up off the background just a little bit. So I am using my marker straight on the paper. I do start to get a little bit of pilling on my paper because I'm not waiting for it to dry all the way. I'm going with my marker on top of the wet paper. And to be honest, I don't know if that's good for my distress marker or not. Um, I just kind of did it. I didn't really think about what was good for my supplies. So um, you might want to check that out before you get too used to doing this. I do it all the time and I haven't had any problems, but um, I would hate to tell you guys that it's totally fine and then have somebody ruin a distress marker by accident. So I am now coming back in with that same, it's pumice stone that I'm working with the whole time here, and I'm now going to put the deeper shadows that they're standing on. And you can see that my paper is peeling pretty good at this point, but I don't really mind um, because I'm just going to go ahead and brush that off when I'm done. And then I just take my paintbrush and get rid of those harsh edges. 
and now this watercolor piece is finished. So some nice and simple easy watercoloring there for you. And now I'm going to start assembling my card. So I have trimmed down some pattern paper. This is from the 6x6 pad um, from My Mind's Eye and it is called Happy Haunting. And I used a Lawn Fawn scalloped, um, stitch scallop border die to cut the bottom of the border out. And now I'm using some washi tape by Little B. It's this really cool solid black washi tape with this gold foiled spider web on it and I thought it was really fun and I just got it at a major Halloween clearance sale at my local craft store so I really wanted to use it. So I'm just going to put it at the top of that pattern paper panel there and I'm going to trim off the excess with my scissors and make that line up perfectly. I have cut all of this down to five inches wide um, and my card base is going to be a little bit smaller than a standard size card. It's going to be five and a quarter by four inches and that was just kind of what worked for the size of my images. So now I'm going to take one of those sentiments from that little stamp set and I'm going to stamp it on the reverse side of that pattern paper which is kind of this grayish tone with this really pale writing. You can't really tell in the video but it has some some really pale scripty writing on there so it goes really well with the rest of the theme. And I'm just going to stamp that in the same VersaFine ink. So this is my card base and I'm just using some black soot distress ink to go ahead and distress the edges of the front of my card base and that is because a little bit of that is going to show behind my decorated panel here. So once I have got that taken care of I'm going to get rid of my craft mat there and go back to my my pink surface and then I'm going to um, distress the edges of my watercolor piece. I want everything to look cohesive and so applying all the black soot distressing to the edges of everything is going to kind of give everything a nice similar look. And now I'm just going to use my ATG gun, put a little bit of stick -um on the back of this panel, and that's going to go right on the front of my card base. I did put a little bit of extra because watercolor paper is a little bit thicker and I want to make sure that it's not going to peel up. So now I'm going to put that on the front of my card base and I am going to leave that eighth of an inch border around the outside of the whole thing. And then I'm going to put my black soot distressing on my pattern paper panel here. I did put it over the top of the washi tape on the sides. You can't tell because it's solid black washi tape, but you know, I gave it a shot. <laughs> can't say I didn't try, right? So now I'm going to take my um, foam tape and I'm just going to pop this piece up and that's going to give it a little bit of shadow and dimension and I really like the look that it gives. And then the little witchy feet are going to be popping out from underneath that pattern paper and I really like that look. I think it's super cute. Those witches are standing behind the curtain or something. I don't know. So now there's the same little border all the way around my decorative panel there. So I think that it looks really nice. And then I'm going to do for a finishing touch, I've got these gemstones and they come in these little strips. So I'm just going to follow the line of that washi tape and put these little black gemstones down all the way across the card. I do not know what brand these gemstones are. I'm so sorry. This is something that's been in my stash since way before I was blogging or doing videos so I didn't need to keep the labels to know what company things came from and so I have no idea where these came from so I apologize for that but you can find gemstones in lots of places. So now I've trimmed down my little sentiment and I'm going to put a banner on the edge and I do that by making a cut up the middle and then going from each corner to the top of that cut and that gives you a nice perfect banner flag every time. It's a great trick. Now I'm going to add my distressing so that this is nice and cohesive with the rest of the pieces on this card. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of um, accents on this little banner. And I'm going to do that with the two little teeny tiny spider webs that come in the stamp set. I'm going to use my same Versamark ink and I'm just going to take those super detailed adorable little spider webs and stamp them on my sentiment. And that's going to not only flesh out my little sentiment banner, but it's going to tie that in with that washi tape that I put on the front. So I really liked the way that, um, that that all coordinated together. I love those little spider webs. They're so cute and they're so detailed. Like it was crazy. That's one thing about the VersaFine ink that's great too, is that it's super, you can get all those little details. It's really awesome. So now I'm going to apply my banner with a little bit more dimension. I'm putting some um, adhesive tape on there. And I do realize before I stick this down, I peel the bottom pieces off because I remembered that that row of gemstones is there and that it was going to get in the way. So I didn't want to get that in the way there. So I lined that up with the top of my decorative panel and now I'm going to go ahead and stick a little bit of this foam underneath the little flags of the banner just so that it has some support there. And then the gemstones get to run right underneath and you don't even notice. 
So now that that is on there, I am going to do the final finishing piece, which is some little bats from my Batty Border die. And this is almost more of an inside joke with myself because I love these so much. I've been putting them on every project, so I decided I was going to use them on every project in my Handmade Halloween series. So there's my little bats for this card. And then my finishing touch is going to be some Wink of Stella. And my Wink of Stella was getting a little low, so I did go ahead and use a scrap paper to squeeze it and make sure I was getting lots of sparkle there. And I went over all of the little tights on these little legs with my Wink of Stella to give them just that extra little, little something something to be nice and spooky. And this card is done. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you coming by for all of my handmade Halloween series. I only have one more to go. Halloween is next Friday. I cannot believe that it's already so close. Oh my goodness. So there's a nice look at that finished card. You can see it there. Um, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. Go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I've listed all the supplies over at my blog. You can join me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. And then here are links to the other three days of my handmade Halloween series. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.